guys, Derek with Divine AV here. We have a very cool one today. We're doing this uh, this old 5.1.2 in this room. We've already finished this project. We're gonna go ahead and show it to you guys. Um, when I walked in this room and I first quoted it, it was all white. So we got our painter and got him over here to get the painting done for him. So yeah, if you guys are looking for custom consultations and uh, paint services, carpet, we, have, we can offer that as well. So guys, please enjoy the video. Smash the like button, give us that subscribe, and let's get this rock and roll. What is up guys, we've got a new uh, home theater, another home theater installed today. We're doing a 5.1.2. Um, please give us a like, subscribe on this video, and uh, enjoy the video. Let's get it going. So here we got a uh, Pro 250, so we're going to wire Pro 250 in the center and Pro 160s all by clips for the front. So those are the front stage. We're doing, what is it, Benny? SPL 100? One point. Yes, it is. Yeah, SPL 100 for the subwoofer. We're actually gonna keep these things in their location. This room's a little weird with the back wall and everything, but I do like these back side surrounds. Um, normally I'd move them forward, but since he has this bar top area and stuff, I still wanna give a good side surround for the back row here. So side surrounds are gonna go there, and then Benny wants to move the overhead C16s in about 18 inches to right there. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the quality up here, shoot the hyperlapse and keep it going. Enjoy the show. All right guys, we're moving through. It's been, what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We got the c 16 moved in, moved both those guys in like we were talking about. Uh, we were originally gonna put those speakers back there, but they had wired these on the opposite sides of the studs on each side. So that speaker would have been like four inches off from this one. So we decided for the sake of symmetry and making it centered on the room and whatnot, we're moving these behind, under these sconce light. Hey, go ahead, you're, no, you're not using my drill. You're my drill. <laughs> Uh, yeah, carry on. So yeah, Benny's now drilling through these wiring them. Get a thing. All right, so they got uh, so the side surrounds are in, the whole front stage is in. Um, a little bit of spackle because there's some weird studs up front, but I'll get a little closer. But that'll look great. We'll just paint right over that, dust it off a little bit, paint the front. It's all behind the screen. Um, mount the projector up next. I've got a courier coming, delivering me a couple projectors, so those should be here 20, 30 minutes. And yeah, just smack the receiver in. Smack it in. Yep. yep. I labeled them in gold. <laughs> well, you labeled them in gold? Yep. It's fresh. Oh, yeah. Classy. Let's keep rolling. Here we have our Epson 3800. Let's go ahead and unbox this guy. Guys. So in the box, got your little manual. I don't think I've ever looked at this manual. Immediately after purchasing the projector, make sure you have removed the projector pad. Basically, get rid of the foam that's on it. So, it's kind of a manual on it. Styrofoam. This guy's right here. And yeah, that's uh, basically all that's in the box besides the power cord. Very nice packaging. They do a great job at protecting their whole projectors from the factory. Yeah, this Epson 3800 
great unit. This is that foam pad that the manual was talking about. Um, your lens cap, always keep this. This isn't something to trash and throw away. This is good to hold on to um, whenever you're not using the projector. So if at all possible, like put this guy back on. It keeps dust and whatnot out of the projector. Super easy to unclip and clip back in. Just got two little pinch clips. Put it to the front and then just clip it back in. Just like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing apparently. Just like that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this one doesn't have that automatic closing lens. So as much as possible, try to clip that back on there and hold on to that. And then, yeah, let's look at the top of this guy. It's got your lens shift, so it's got lens shift uh, up and lens shift uh, sideways. When you are doing this, it is uh, pretty difficult. It's super jerky to get in that exact spot. But um, also, from the factory, this lens is centered. So if you watch any of our other videos, I was talking about getting that lens centered on the screen. This lens is centered, so you want to start center before you start doing all your shifting. Otherwise, you'll be pointing the projector one way or the other. Like after you mount that projector dead center where the lens is centered with the screen, you want to be able to uh, look, get down from floor level, look at the top of that projector, and make sure it's parallel across it as well so you're not trying to lens shift too far left or right. Um, I'll show you again when we mount this projector up. But yeah, basically what I'm talking about is this lens is set dead center right here, and we don't want to rely on this left and right lens shift too much. Uh, more so you should just be using the up and down. Um, yeah, aside from that, this thing does, it's a cool as a business projector as well. It's got the little feet on it so you can raise it up and whatnot. And then it uh, has vertical, uh, has horizontal keystones. So if your image is pointing one way too hard, you can use a horizontal keystone to square it out. So yeah, that's pretty sweet. It's got HDR, 3D that no one uses anymore, um, all your back inputs. Uh, it's got RS-232, which that's for like control four and whatnot to control it um a dc out on it audio out so if you want to just like plug this guy into a, a little bluetooth speaker or a little speaker or something like that this thing also has built-in speakers in it which is pretty cool for testing purposes um but yeah you can go audio out into like a nicer little speaker system if you're just like not look like just you know basically some portable speakers or something you could plug into them and just like if you're outside or something, I'm going to take it out and do that. So it's got that cool option, two different HDMI ports. Always use HDMI 1 because that is going to be your faster uh, 60 hertz port. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Then, of course, you know, it's got the focus and zoom on the front. So that is focus. This guy's zoom. All right, let's keep rolling. Hello, Rafael, Michelangelo, and an uh, orange one, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Oh no. Donatello. I thought orange was like Or is that blue? Purple. That's purple? Purple. Yeah, Mikey. Yeah, Mikey. Yeah, okay. So we got Mike Angelo, Donatello, Raphael. Who's the last one? Okay, anyways, yeah, we got the projector mounted up here. Yes, yeah, so you gotta get that, you know, straight in line with that. This is what I was talking about being parallel with the room, so that's not cocked that way or that way. It is straight. Bulb is on center. So Boom. So yeah, Cody's got the screen all finished up here, borders on it. It's all good to go. Benny's just hitting some touch-up paint. So he's hitting the touch-up paint, and then we're just going to put the rack in. So next we're just going to mount the screen up, uh, put all the rack together, clean up the room, tune, and then out of here. Let's get a rock.
guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for watching this one. Hit it with that like and smash the subscribe. And we'll see you on the next project.